Hi, I'm Eric Schiller and I hope you've enjoyed the videos on this disc. I'd like to introduce you to some of my printed books because I think you might find them enjoyable and instructive. I have a large book devoted to all sorts of tips and tricks that anyone from beginners to quite advanced players might find useful. This isn't a book about just strategy and tactics, but also includes essential knowledge of the rules, chess etiquette, and all sorts of tips in the opening and the middle game, the end game play. Just a lot of general knowledge, wisdom accumulated over the years from the finest players and finest writers. One very unique aspect of this book is that it repeats a lot of the so-called conventional wisdom about chess, but then shows how those rules don't really apply. In fact, many of the little catchy phrases you may have been taught uh, turn out to be quite misleading in the modern chess world. So you might want to check this one out. For more specific advice on surviving the early stages of the game. John Watson and I wrote a book called Survive and Beat Annoying Chess Openings. This covers all of the tricky and sharp lines for white and black that arise in the standard opening E4 met by E5 as black. So you'll learn how to avoid the deadly fried liver attack. You'll see how best to use the sequence of moves in the opening to get to the kind of position you want. You can meet all sorts of gambits, like the King's Gambit and the Danish Gambit, the Goering Gambit, and know exactly what to do. And this also applies as white. We have a lot of sharp lines for black that can catch people unprepared and often score a victory in the first 12 to 15 moves. So if you study this book, you'll have no problem in the E4, E5 openings avoiding or refuting all of the tricky traps that are thrown your way. For a more general approach to the openings, I have three sets of, of books. Standard chess openings and some of the smaller books that go with it deal with openings that are found in top professional play all the time. They're also suitable for amateur use and it's often hard to figure out which of the openings to play because after all there are all those books that say winning with this, winning with the French, winning with the Italian, winning with the Zimbabwean, you know, everything. So in standard chess openings you get the real scoop on all of the major openings that are seen in professional standard uh, competitions and you get an illustrative game to show you how the middle game goes too so that you can get some sense of how the opening would fit your particular preferences. If you're starting out I strongly advise you to play openings that have been played by world champions. World champions choose their openings very carefully of course and so these have been thoroughly vetted and checked out. You'll learn all you need to know about the major openings that are seen in world champion play and also how to handle some of those offbeat openings that get thrown their way. If you're a more advanced player you want to develop a serious opening repertoire. For black against e4 I recommend the Karo Khan defense. The Karo Khan is very solid and because you don't have many weaknesses it's very hard for your opponent to attack. This book contains a complete repertoire based on the classical variation of the Karo Khan, but with kingside castling, which is the more modern style. The book contains all of White's attempted strategies to refute the Karo Khan and gives good, reliable advice against all of them. There's also a great deal of discussion of strategy and tactics. Against the Queen Pawn opening, and the English and the Reti and many flank openings, I recommend the Tarash defense. It's a defense I've been playing for a quarter of a century and it's served me very well. 
I'm not the only fan. Garry Kasparov used the Tarash defense to conquer the world championship. The Tarash has a very simple basic formation. You just set your pieces up on the proper squares and you're ready to go. In some variations, as black, you'll have an isolated pawn, but you'll see that the isolated pawn is not a liability. It's often a big asset and gives rise to a lot of attacking chances. So this is a solid opening, but one that can lead to some nice fireworks for black. In fact, some very, very famous games have been victories by black. As with the book on the Karo Khan, this book provides a complete defense to all of white's attempts to handle the opening and contains lots of general discussion and specific examples of strategies and tactics and features many complete annotated games. If you like The Sicilian Dragon, the late Edvard Gufeld and I wrote a book that exposes its secrets. This isn't a collection of just opening lines and recommended moves. Instead, we talk about the basic ideas of the dragon, the strategy and the tactics, and how you can achieve your goals in the opening. It is a great accompaniment to a encyclopedia or big database of dragon games. Those give you the moves, we give you the words and the ideas. Similarly, if you're a fan of the King's Indian defense, then you'll enjoy The Secrets of the King's Indian, which I also wrote with the late Edward Gufeld, who was one of its leading exponents. From the white side, you might enjoy hypermodern play. Hypermodern play allows your opponent to build up a big center and then proceeds to destroy it. The great player Richard Reti developed a scheme of development for white which leads to exactly the kind of positions that hypermodernists love. And this book, which is a rather advanced book, provides a complete repertoire for white against everything that black can throw at you. It is not recommended for players rated under 1700. If you play chess more for fun than for blood or money, then you might enjoy gambits. Gambits are always fun to play because you get to build up a big attack and usually get enough to more or less compensate for the pawn or two that you've invested. Gambits are for everyone from beginners all the way through top professionals. Many ancient classic gambits are still part of the standard repertoire even in world championship play. Gambit Chess Openings is a huge encyclopedia with over 900 gambits. That's almost twice as many as any other book has ever included. Many of these gambits are poor choices. Uh, perhaps they're even just frivolous, but they're still fun. And many of them are very complicated and require a lot of preparation. But the vast majority of the gambits in this book can be played and tried in, in casual play just for the fun of it and I think you'll be surprised at how effective the results are. So, if you want to play gambits, you can play them all the time if you like. You can play them as white, and I've got a book which is a whole gambit opening repertoire for white, based on the Goering Gambit, among others. And as black, we've got the Gambit opening repertoire for black, which includes such things as the Shara Gambit, a very, very sharp variation of the Tarash defense, and one which can very quickly overrun white's position, and in the worst case, leads to an endgame where you might be one pawn down and have to defend. Well, that's life in the Gambit lane. Of course, some people prefer more radical chess. They just want an opening that nobody's ever heard of. Well, that's tough to do these days because most of those openings are now chronicled in the new edition of Unorthodox Chess Openings. It has hundreds of bizarre openings, including those that involve drunken knights and knight pawns strolling up the board and moving your queen out early in the game and basically just breaking the rules. Every opening in this collection breaks at least one and usually two of 
the standard advice given by chess teachers and chess experts. So now some of these openings may be bizarre but are still played in fairly high level competition. In fact, the late Grandmaster Tony Miles used one to knock off Anatoly Karpov in a very famous game. And that was when Karpov was the champion of the world. So this is a book which contains openings that are fun, might be a little practical, but if you're amused and interested in the strange and bizarre ways some people play chess, you'll enjoy this book a lot. On a far more practical level, you want to become a better player, and I've written a few books that can help you. Development of a Chess Master is a unique book in that I based it mostly on my mistakes. I give all sorts of examples where I chose the wrong move. I try to explain why I arrived at such a poor choice. I give warning against repeating my mistakes. And you can have a lot of fun in the first half of the book uh, watching me get clobbered <laughs> thanks to some really poor choices. However, the latter part of the book shows how I learned the lessons and was able to apply them against very strong competition even beating a large number of grandmasters. It's a small book, but one which I think can do quite a bit of good. Well, Bobby Fischer didn't make so many mistakes, <laughs> not like me. So, Bobby, uh, you learn from his good moves, and he's played many of them. And I've selected a number of his greatest games, and I've annotated these without long variations. You know, many game collections these days are nothing more than printouts of a lot of computer analysis with a little commentary tacked on. This book goes the opposite way. It's all commentary. I do give a couple of lines that are very important for tactical reasons, but otherwise if you're interested in something that didn't happen in the game, you can set up your chess computer program and I'm sure it'll give you a pretty reasonable analysis. I concentrated on explanation and lots and lots of probing the reasons that moves were made. So this is a very different sort of book. Uh, you'll find it at all bookstores. You might want to pick it up and take a look. Uh, I know Bobby Fischer's in the news for other reasons these days, but let's not forget that he was absolutely one of the greatest players of all time. Well, Bobby came to prominence because he was a young prodigy. And in Whiz Kids Teach Chess, we have a collection of local Bay Area, that's San Francisco Bay Area, um, top stars, uh, people who have gone on to have very successful uh, chess experiences. We have uh, Jenny Franklock, Jen Shahadi, Greg Shahadi, Jordi Montrenaud, Matthew Ho, Vinay Bhatt, and yes, Hikaru Nakamura. Back in 1995 when I wrote this book, we knew Hikaru was going to make it, and uh, the ten-year-old Hikaru is featured in this book. So especially if you have young players at home, uh, this book can be a lot of fun. It has some very uh, cute pictures, too. On the more serious end, look, you're never going to be a great player unless you can play end games. So, you have to get down to it. 639 Essential End Game Positions is a collection of 639 end games from actual play. Um, this is not a book of theory. This is a book of practical end game play. It contains all of the key positions you need to know as the foundation for good endgame play, but it explores all of the critical decisions that have to be made in the endgame. Usually this is a matter of do I exchange or don't I exchange some pieces. So uh, this book uh, is very easy to read. It has a unique format. Instead of having some long-winded analysis attached to each position, the position is broken up according to how many pieces are on the board. So if you have, for example, an endgame with king and five pawns against king and four pawns, that endgame after an exchange would move to the king and four against king and three section, and then when another trade takes place, king and three against king and two, so that you always have grouped together similar kinds of experiences and don't have to keep flipping pages back and forth to uh, match it up with the other similar positions. For pure tactics, well, killer chess tactics should do the job. This is actually a book featuring exclusively moves played by the world champions and their opponents. It was 
formerly world champion tactics and world champion combinations and these have been combined with uh, additions and revisions and Vladimir Kramnik is now in there it's a very big book and I promise you this if you go all the way through that book your tactics will get a lot better